Welcome back to another daily recap on the Ticks and Trades channel. I'm Sam. Today is Thursday, November 14, 2024. It is a few minutes in front of 8 a.m. Eastern. So the levels you see on the board are what we're going to use to trade against in the E-mini futures, depending on how price comes into these levels here in the SPY. And of course, we're talking about the E-minis, the ES futures, which correlates with the price here in the SPY. Not a whole lot to say about the levels. We'll come back to this chart after the closing bell to talk about any trades in the E-minis that may have resulted from the SPY reacting at these levels during the open session. Catch you on the other side. And 12 hours later, we're back. Kind of an interesting day, another down day. We've been saying it's likely price is going to go down for last week or so. But what's interesting about today is there were front runners in front of every single one of our levels that got that price got close to. So there were no trades. And I'll just talk through how it worked out. Let me just adjust the levels first. So here's 945, 15 minute uh, window had opened and we're ready to take trades. So they're between these two levels. So either they're going to come up here, which we're going to pull this down toward price, five cents. So there you go, 597.10. Or down here, we'll bring this up five cents. And then we'll go ahead and do this one too. So now as price is coming back up to this level here, they got to a high of 596.97. That's not quite a near miss territory. I like to see it within 10 cents and a quick pull away. Well, I don't like to see that, but if you do see that, then that's the market telling you that that was a trade. We've been over this plenty of times before, but they never got there. And each time they did it, it was kind of that same area. So, I mean, you could have taken this clue here and this clue here is to mean that, well, maybe the level was should have been here and that was a good place to trade because they gave you several opportunities. But you know, treating this as a process, they never hit the level, so there's no trade. Then they got down to a low of 595.12. Once again, it's still outside that window of that 10 cent threshold that I use to determine whether it's a near miss or not. So technically nothing's wrong with this. The level has not been satisfied. So if they come back into it later, you know, depends on how they come into it. You can take the trade. I'm not going to count it. And here's why. So say you did take the trade. Well, here's what you're looking for, for profit. So if you bought here a while later, expecting a bounce of four points in the E-minis, you would want them to come up to here or higher, right? That's your 40 cents, the equivalent of four points in the E-minis. But what do they do? They went down, got under the fumble threshold. But just to point out here, the time that they spent under the fumble threshold, these two different instances here, was not enough to trigger a, a warning sign and call this a fumble, then reverse. But the clue that something else possibly was going to, to be a little off on this is they got up to a high of 595.37, just pennies away from triggering the trade. So you, you would have been in the money. Say you bought two contracts here, you waited this thing out. They're getting really close to your $400 uh, profit objective with your two contracts and they pull back to your entry point. So if I, if it were me, I would just take this type of behavior as I don't think I'm going to trust it. They might go lower and keep going. So I'm going to jump out at a wash. So this is a near miss of the profit objective. After some time, they did give it to you if you stayed in it, but with this kind of behavior way down here, that wouldn't have felt very good. That's several points out of the money and you already had a signal that you probably should bail out. So once again, that's this level done. This level's done. And now they're down to this level here, and it's 3.08 p.m., perfectly good time to take a trade if you want. The low was 5.9302. Once again, a near miss. They pulled up, so they came back down into it again. A, you're not going to take it because of the time of day, plus that was your trade that you just missed because of front runners. So three opportunities, playing by the rules, and no trades. I don't know if it makes sense to watch my recording of the day. I can just sort of run through this really fast. Just to show you what was going on, this is when I called that one good. I was Figured that was my sign to not touch that level if they ever did get back up into it. And I did the same thing down at 595, which you'll see in a minute right there. And so it wasn't too long after that that I just decided not to do anything. And this is what I recorded. So nothing to see. There's no trades. But just to show you what, when they did come down into this 595 later, I wasn't interested. I just watched. So no trades for me and no official trades if you were playing by the rules. What did they do on the daily chart? Well, look at the close. So the official close, according to Trade Station here, I haven't looked anywhere else, but this should be close enough, is 593.35. Well, the low of this, I mean, this is right there in the neighborhood of the low of this uh, day, several or last week sometime, which was 593 even. So they spiked below the low in the very last minute, came up a few pennies, a few cents, just to close right on top of the low of that. So they're kind of fighting this. They're 591.93. Oh, they've dropped. Oh, wow. Okay, they've dropped in the last few minutes, I think. Let's go ahead and just throw this into a, like a 10-minute and turn on the 24 hours. Yeah, so they're dropping a little bit lower. But that's really not what I want to show you. What I want to show you is 
just the daily chart. We've talked about them kind of rolling over some type of bigger move, but really that was, I was thinking, what would that do on the weekly chart? Because if you look at the weekly chart, we get a signal tomorrow. So this is this is the week that we're in, and we have one more day, Friday. So if we get a signal tomorrow, the way this candle closes tomorrow, then the timing already is good for them to fall down in another way. It doesn't mean they're going to do it immediately, but there's a couple possibilities of what we could get this candle to look like, and we really need higher volume for it to have some value. But in any case, it wouldn't be surprising if they come back down. And also, go back to the daily chart to compare it to the IWM, which we talked about before and is, was in kind of a worse shape than the SPY. So what do they do today? Well, they close below the low of this. So they've got some space, really all the way down to this top here, this pivot high, down to this breakout area here. So there's a zone, call it like 228.80 maybe to 226.80. So if the IWM comes down, and this is a little bit of weakness here because this trend line, which they've been fighting for a long time, haven't been able to get above it. They couldn't do it, and they've pulled back in a pretty big way. What are we going to see? Something like this. I'm not saying it's going to happen because there's going to be places that price could get caught. But if IWM falls, SPY probably won't be too far off. That's just my take at this point. So it could be that a few things hinge on tomorrow's outcome, the daily and the weekly chart of the SPY. We're definitely keeping an eye on things. They're still bullish, no doubt about that, but they could be in the process of pulling back for a little reset or a big reset. We'll see. On the tracking logs, the first one playing by the rules, you can read all the notes that explain why none of the levels that were hit were actually traded. So no trades taken. There you go. And then on Sam's trades, I just didn't take any trades. Made the decision pretty early on the way they came up into the levels that I was just going to step back. Because when unusual things happen like that, I just find it safer to step back and be a spectator. So that's pretty much it. You can take a look at all the averages and percentages to date based on where we are. That's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you found some value in this. Thanks for supporting the channel. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to pay pretty close attention, try to create a good game plan. I think it's going to be an important day and have new levels, of course, and send those out. And if you're interested in getting the levels yourself, then just head over to ticksandtrades.com to get some more information and learn how to do that. I'll see you in tomorrow's recap video. Have a great rest of your day.